Okay, now the Rascals had 18 top 40 hits, five top 10 hits, three number one mega hits, which includes Groovin', Good Lovin', and Beautiful Morning. And by the way, I was just listening uh, on the way home today, or not long ago, I was listening to Rhino, uh, the compilation, The Greatest Hits, yes. and yeah. that was super cool, man. Wow. Well, <laughs> I had, I had, I enjoyed it. My dad's like, take this CD. And I was like reading the inside notes, you know, and try. Yeah. And it's really cool. They got a cool uh, deal there reading the history of uh, the rascals and. uh, Oh, is that so? Yeah. Man. And and, uh, I was even reading, my dad pointed out to me, he said, you know, is it true that Otis Redding, he looks into the studio door and he said, I just want to make sure you guys were white. Is that true? That's exactly, that's exactly <laughs> correct. How, we, um, cool. Uh, so cool. Yeah, he was a funny guy, man. You know, he, he was a, it was a good guy, you know, and talented as you can make him, but uh, wow. he was also just a good guy, you know? Yeah, that's right. I, I mean, all those memories, you know, I'm sure you, you were talking to all kinds of people and have all kinds of uh, memories. And, and uh, I know you've got a new book coming out, right? In March. Right. Can you talk about the book? Yeah, uh, Felix Cavalieri, a memoir of a rascal, and it's from Pelham, which is where I grew up, to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And, um, uh, you know, it's pretty interesting because uh, we're doing a pre-sale on FelixCavalieriMusic.com, and we're doing real well, you know, because, you know, we have a problem. uh, The the stores, they're they're non-existent, you know. I mean, the Barnes & Noble around here, they haven't done a... uh, uh, you know, signing in quite a while, you know, right. so we're, 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 uh, we're doing it online. And of course we'll see what happens when we, we get the actual print copy, you know, maybe do it, do it on, on the show at the shows, you know? Right. Yeah. That'd be fun. That'd be good. I know the fans will get a kick out of that too. I think so. I think so. I hope so. You know, it's, it's interesting because, uh, you know, there's a story there and, uh, you know, it started off because, uh, when we did our, tr- uh, musical kind of whatever you want to call it in in uh, on broadway once upon a dream right we would do these press conferences and uh, i noticed that every single one of us had a different answer for the same questions right so i said well you know i think it's a good di- idea to document my thoughts you know so that you know there's no controversy as to what felix thinks that's you know right. that's right and that's really how it started and then it became like you know kind of interesting to talk about yourself for two years oh my goodness yeah <laughs> well yeah you, you, well you and I, I think i told you last time i i love biographies and i love reading about yeah. um you know the history and, and you know i kind of get in this inside you know people's minds you know and it, and it almost i feel like i have a connection there you know it's almost like i get to know the people you know closer than you would you know otherwise but uh yeah biographies are awesome and and it's also a way for people that weren't around back in the day to find out what happened and then for future generations to go, hey, this is what right. Felix was talking about. This is what happened, and that's really cool well, stuff. Well, it was a different world, that's for sure. You know, completely different world uh, musically, music business-wise from what it is now. Right. And in many other ways, you know, it was quite different. I mean, there's no internet, you know, of course, and, you know, uh, you couldn't find out, uh, you know, exactly what was going on every, uh, as soon as it happened. Right. instantly and have a camera there you know different planet yeah well it's it's good and bad i mean the bad thing is i mean there's it's not as exciting you know because used to you have to wait for stuff to happen mm-hmm. you had to find out you had to, there's a mystery to see what's going to happen next now it's like boom yeah. if it happens it's like five seconds later it's on the internet and there you are it's all done. over the world all, all over, over the world, world. that's right about it, you know yeah it's crazy um and uh, we got what well, you were talking earlier about, uh, you know, playing, uh, you're fixing to play some shows. And uh, you got Mickey Dolenz of the uh, Monkees uh, with the right. Le- Legends Tour. Can you talk about that? Right. Well, we're hoping to get that back on track. We were supposed to start next week, actually, in New York and in Massachusetts. And uh, they've been postponed now because of the of the COVID right. till, uh it looks like June but I'm looking forward for that to happen, you know, because, you know, it's a rascal and a monkey. That's, and, that's cool. You know, it, it should be a lot of fun because both, you know, both musical, uh, 
uh, kind of discography is are are pretty upbeat, happy, happy musics. And yeah. I and I think that that's what people really want and need right now. No, definitely. Um, and you know, with with Mickey being the last monkey, you know, it, it makes you think about you know we've been losing a lot of people. We're appreciative to have, still have some of the people still around to play the music. You know, the, the ones that are still doing it. It's, it's really awesome if you think about it. You know, it's, well, we it's a blessing, the right? Yesterday, yesterday, two day before, Ronnie Spector was a dear friend of mine. You oh, know, and yeah. uh, yep. It's sad, yep. sad to lose them, you know. I didn't realize, I mean, you know, she lived, uh, I moved to Tennessee from uh, Connecticut, you know, right. and uh, she was uh, a Connecticut resident. And uh, I, I, I knew she had some, some problems, but I, I didn't realize she must have picked up some some uh, cancer in, her, in, in, in the last, you know. Yeah. Year. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't realize either. It said, it, it felt like it wasn't that long, so yeah. Yeah. Got her really fast, but she wasn't in the best of health. You know, she had some, uh, she had some problems with, uh, I think, in her back or something like that. You know. Right. But anyway, she was a great girl. She was a great woman. I mean, she was so sweet, man. Sing her tail off and just, yeah. You know, my kids loved her. She used to come over to our house in Connecticut and just great, great, great person. Wow. Yeah. That's that's. I'm sure you have stories and and just memories, and uh, you know that uh it's just sad well, though when you're losing people like that you know i guess you don't you don't need to take them for granted that's for sure these days especially well we knew her and her her sister and her cousin you know from when she started, they were about 16 18 the most right we knew them all those years wow. you know it's yeah and then you know through the marriage to phil specter and then of course to the marriage to, to jonathan you know right uh yeah, it's a shame. But you know, what are you gonna do, man? You gotta be healthy. You gotta stay healthy. You gotta and and the ones that are still here gotta keep going. Yeah, do the best you can. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. That's right. Um and uh thinking about the uh the well the rascals, how did the rascals get the name Rascals? The Rascals. Well here here's one of those things where everybody had a different story about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My uh, my story is uh, we got it from Soupy Sales. You remember Soupy yeah, Sales? Yeah, I like Soupy. Soupy's from North Carolina, you know. Right. He was a doll, absolute doll. <laughs> it's funny. Let me let me make a short story long because sure, what sure. happened basically is he had a couple of hit records out in the early days. Uh, one was called The Mouse. Okay. You know. Yeah. So we we were trying to get discovered. Right. So we walked into his television station, W any what is it, W N E W, I think it was. Sounds uh good. uh in New York. And, you know, we we're big fans of his. And 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 we told we you know we told him, you know, you got you need a band, man. You can't go out you can't go out in the road without a band. You gotta have a band. And he started cracking jokes. <laughs> And and we started laughing and laughing and laughing because we loved the guy. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and he was so funny, man, and he was so nice. So he said, you mean all these years I've been without a band? I didn't realize I needed a band. I said, yeah, well, you got a record now, dude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got a hit record. You got to go back it up. So he said, he said, you know, he's kind of thought for a while. And he said, um, you know, this might be a good idea. You guys laugh at everything I say. That could come in handy, you know. <laughs> 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 best wow. and, and then he said like what do you call yourselves and we were having a lot of trouble finding a name right. you know uh, right. we were just kind of looking around and trying different names we would do our shows you know in, in the clubs and one one set we would call ourselves this and then so he says you know what i'd like to call you but we could never put it on a marquee he said you know <laughs> <laughs> and, and and i believe he came up with the name rascals okay. i i think it was him i really do that's that's my my yeah. memory, and, and I, I'm going to stick to it. There you go. Though well, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. we'll go with that. So, but I, yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. He was great guy. He was hilarious. I like watching the the reruns of his show. Yep. So funny. Um, Quite a man with a pie in the face and all that stuff. That's good stuff. Oh, he was great. He was great. <laughs> um, well, uh, and I was watching uh, the other day. I was watching uh, the Rascals' performance. Uh, on the Ed Sullivan show of Good Love, and yeah. and uh, so you remember that night very well, huh? Uh well, I remember it kind of. You know, I mean, 
there's an old saying that if you remember the 60s, you weren't there, you know? <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember, we did his show six times, you know, and it, um, it, it was very interesting doing his shows. Uh, uh, basically, when you did Ed Sullivan's show, it was a live show, right. for real, right? you know? You, re- you, you rehearsed for six days. You started Monday morning, bright and early. You did run-throughs every day. And on Saturday night, they did a complete show with a studio audience, not broadcast. Wow. And then on Sunday, they did the real deal. You know, And the real deal was live. And, and that was kind of interesting because you know, Ed was a little older. You yeah. know? And you, know, you have to stick to a time table when you're doing it live right and he would see somebody in the audience that he knew and he'd just go completely off track and there goes 10 or 15 seconds and you know when a television show uh you know you have to keep it so the next act after that would have to scramble to you know yeah. get rid of the 15 se- oh man it was a mess that'd be my look yeah it have was like a 10 mess. seconds to sing. <laughs> you know, even though it's, it's all taped you know yeah that's I could imagine that it was really hectic when you had all those acts and they have to, yeah, you're on next and this one's going to come and this, you got two minutes, you know, you got one, you know, whatever. Uh, we stuck a lot because we, we, we were on first and last. And the last part means if you go, your song is going to get cut 15, 20 seconds. You know what I mean? Because they're going to, they're just going to go to the network, new uh, network ads, you know, whatever. Yeah, right. So it was tough, you know, and, uh, you know, Eddie, uh, you know, I used to live with Eddie during that period of time in New York. We would have all that pent up energy from six days and then you do two minutes, you right. know, if that. So he'd come, he'd come back to the apartment and wreck the place. Right. <laughs> A lot it, of pent up energy. See, that's what, it, you know, you could tell, you know, tell Ed, that's all your fault, pal. You should have gave us like at least four minutes. <laughs> to do See, he was an interesting man because that show was, um, uh, it was one of the last shows to pay your fee rather than a union price uh, mm-hmm. in that he would get, say, say $150,000, $200,000 stipend to, for booking the show. Yeah. And whatever the acts charged, he would pay us a regular fee. Wow. So it was, it was very different. And then, and then it kind of stopped like that and became all union, you know? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of stuff that people don't realize that went on, you know, from back in the then, day. In those days, no, it was a completely different world then. And, you know, it was a big thing because if you did that show, you, you know, that's where the Beatles is where Elvis Presley, you know, was, was found and, you know, kind of broadcast to the world. And so it was a huge thing, you know? Right. Um, well, going back in time, you know, right before the Rascals, I know that you were with, uh, uh, Johnny D and the Starlighters, you know, the, Joey pe- D. I Joey mean, D. not Johnny D. Joe, who is Johnny D? Joey D. Oh, and I, I read, out there. Oh. Yeah, it, was, it was in my mind or something, but, but Joey D and the Starlighter, uh, Peppermint right. Twist. And, uh, but I was reading in the, uh, Rhino Records thing that you were in a doo-wop group called the Escorts with a guy named Neil Diamond. Now, how did that see all, all all that is 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 not correct i was gonna say no what no, i, I would have heard okay no I, I was i'm glad you straightened that out my dad was like ask him about no. that the, the way that's a perfect example uh of um you know people who get the story twisted now maybe that was done on purpose see neil diamond in those days was a songwriter at the brill building in new york city okay you know right. and i had a group i had a singing group uh, from uh, Westchester, which was called the Stereos, okay. and we hooked up with this this this, this fellow who was a uh, was was kind of a producer, you know, arranger, whatever. And he and he introduced us to Neil and Carol King and all those people to to, to get songs from them. Yeah. Now that was completely different. The Escorts was a band I had in college. You know, it was a, a mu- musical band rather than a vocal group. Okay. So it's all twisted, man. But, you know, I knew Neil then, and, you know, it's not surprising to me that, you know, like Neil Diamond is Neil Diamond. He wrote some beautiful songs, including monkey songs. Yeah. I'm a believer, right? He wrote that. Good, song. good songs, yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love them, man. Yeah. yeah. Very good stuff. Talented guy. Yeah. And, uh, but you are called the king of Blue Eyed Soul, not not the prince. 
the king. Oh, you are the Prince king. John. Prince of Prince. Well, he wasn't blue eyed either, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. But uh, so, how does that make you feel if if you're the you're the king of uh, blue eyed soul? Do you, you, get know, the, you get the crown? What you have to understand, man, is this this business is based on publicity. Right. Now, <laughs> you know. First of all, my eyes are not blue, so we will start from there. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> You know, uh, I just did a, a, a photo shoot over here in Nashville uh, at this place. It's called the National Museum of Afro-American Music. Cool. And uh, if you can Google that, and take a look at what they've done downtown here in Nashville. It is amazing. And it's it comes from like the, the old African people with their chants and all that yeah. to blues oh, through man. the swing era. It's pretty cool, man. And it ends up, you know, basically hip hop. Right. And uh, God, I was impressed with it. I really was. It was so nice, you know. Wow. Well done. They're cool. still kind of putting people in acts in there. And, uh, you know, uh, we were the first white act on Atlantic Records, Red and Black, you know, the label. Right. And just to be around all that talent, you know, it was just humbly, you know. So when somebody com comes out and calls you the king of blue eyes, so you go, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want, man. That's cool. Sell them tickets. Right. Just yeah. Yeah. I'll take it. Show me the money and let's do this. Yeah. It's, right. It's, it's a very strange <laughs> feeling, you know, because uh, you know, like I say, it's 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 an honor to be even included in the same, you know, breath as some of these people, you know. Oh, it's there's a lot of good music out there, and like you you were telling me last time, you know, growing up listening to these different acts, yep. it's part of you and. And the uh, Motown influence is very strong uh, in the soul uh, in, in your singing. Uh, I was listening, you know, to the uh, greatest hits and man, you got the soul going on in the. Well, you know, you know, know, basically when, when you when you come up and you, and you of course, you're listening to that and you're also like emulating that when you were doing like your, uh, you know, pre rascal performances. I, I was in a band that had to do we had to do parties and proms and weddings, and bar mitzvahs, you know, and they, they asked for those songs. Right. So you, you sing, them, right. you know, and when you sing them, obviously you try to you try to emulate the people that, you know, did them, you know, and uh, that's your training. It's a good training ground. Yeah. Or oh, I mean, you nailed it. I mean, you did your well, job. Well, we all we all did that. Yeah, I mean, everybody, that's right. Everybody, you know, if you get lucky, you know, and 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 you can develop your own kind of like connotation of that, then then you you, you really did your job. You did well, you know, because you know, you, that's they're right. the best. As yeah. are the best. Yeah, the best. Definitely. Um, hey, I always love uh, the photos, like on your albums and different. Um, you know, in books and things like that, I always see you with a big smile, and you always have like this hat on. So, where, where where'd you get the idea for the hat? Why are you always wearing that trademark well, hat? Well, oh, um, Italians are pretty superstitious, you know. Like these ball players, you know, they wear the same socks when they won the World Series, you know. Right. I, I have good luck wearing that hat. Uh, you know, I a lot of good things happen with with that hat on uh in terms of like you know we found our manager i had the hat on we got our record contact i had the hat on we got a number one record i had the hat on yeah. so i kept it until somebody stole it from me that's oh. all and he I, had and he had number one hits and, and <laughs> whoever they got <laughs> see it worked oh yeah it's like the magic feather the dumbo you know with yeah it's it, yep. it works yeah um and uh so the rascals, you know, very successful. So what was the turning point that kind of made the band kind of stop back in the day? Well, I was very simple. Uh, one of the wheels on the car decided to stop running. Simple as that. Right. You know, uh, Eddie Brigatti decided to quit and he decided to quit more than once. First time we were able to kind of get him back, talk him back a little bit. Second time, no good. He was gone. Mm -hmm. So that derailed us. And, uh, you know, I mean, as far as the rascals, that's what did it. Yeah. Wow. So, you know, and it's a shame because, yeah. you know, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess, you know, basically he's got to live with that. But it kind of left us a little bit, you know, high and dry there, you know. So, and, you know, what did you do as far as you, when you realized that it was over? You know, 
how long were you in that little funk where you thought, man? Well, I, we didn't have long to be in the funk because, you know, I, I mean, the story uh, is like this. We, we were at a contract signing to jump from Atlantic Records to Columbia Records. Mm -hmm. So literally at the signing, which is almost hard to believe, Gee. he left. Wow. Now, there was a lot of money on that table. There was also, I believe, two albums on the table. Wow. Uh, I think it was at least two albums and a lot of money, a lot of zeros. And uh, I'd be darned if we were going to say, well, we'll see you. We're going to break up. No, we got somebody else. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I, I ended up, you know, recruiting an entirely new band because everything just fell apart internally, but not, not externally. The record company went along with us for a while. Yeah. You know, it was different because different is different, you know, and yeah. I understand that. I understand the fans, you know, they, they, they wanted to hear something because they were locked into that. That's right. And I, 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 I kind of stretched out a little bit and went to a little bit more of a FM rather than an AM uh, type of energy. And the interesting thing is that some of the fans rejected it, you know, and it opened up whole new markets in Asia and places like that where they, they accepted it and, and cherished it. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it, it's just interesting, but you know, that, that was the, that was the, that was the catalyst. There was the last straw, so to speak. Yeah. And was there a, a good reason why he decided to just kind of just stop in the middle of the signing and everything? Well, I, I don't think anything is a good reason uh, to have that happen no, like that. It's no. like, I mean, okay, it, what, whatever it was, uh, you know, basically, which we might never know, um, it's not it's not really too cool to do that, uh, no. uh, you know, and, and you know, uh, at spur of the moment like that. If you're going to, if you, we should have really been aware because he had quit once before, you know. Yeah. So whatever reasons, I mean, not, now as the years go by, I mean, there, there's, uh, there's a lot of... Um, kind of like data as to what those reasons were, N none of which, uh, you know, are too pleasant, you know? Yeah. But I mean, the bottom line is he did, he didn't quit to go on and pursue a solo career. Yeah. that's. Uh, he just quit. And so, yeah, I, I guess, you know, things happen in life, I guess. And you just move on. Things happen for a reason, but you, you keep going and you do whatever you can, which led to other well, there's stuff. There's a lot of reasons for it. I mean, like I said, they're more personal to him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, there's a lot of pressure on people in this business, you know, uh, especially in his, in his instance, because he came from a very large family, you know, right. and, um, uh, you know, uh, who know, who knows? I mean, like I say, I get myself in trouble when I speculate. So yeah. I won't speculate. Okay. Um, so what was it like for you as a kid growing up in, uh, New York? Well, that's what the, that's what the book's about. You know, uh, it's pretty wonderful, man. I mean, I, I really enjoyed my childhood, even though I lost my mom at an early age, which kind of mm. screwed up the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I had a great life. Uh, you know, I, I love sports. I was able to go out and play. I had three lessons a week, classical music for eight years which kind of inhibited my playing time going out and playing with the guys, right. but it sure helped me out. Yeah. Uh, I went to a great school. Thanks to my father and mother deciding that I should grow up in a, in a really good exclusive kind of educated town. And I appreciated that all my life. Cause I got a good education. We were safe, you know, and, uh, you know, basically, uh, happy, uh, you know, until of course, uh, you know, life kind of makes it, makes it, makes itself felt on you. So I, I really have no complaints uh, as far as uh, growing up is concerned. I, I, I wish everybody could have as nice a, you know, a start as I did. Right. And uh, the last time I was talking to you, you were mentioning, uh, we were talking about George Harrison. And, oh, uh, yeah. And I think that's when my, my <laughs> ah, crashed. That's when you were like, yeah. <laughs> so George. Uh, it's well, we'll all your, George. We'll <laughs> Yeah. I said the magic word and it now, but so how cool was that? You know, you, you were, you were telling me about George and, uh, how he was, uh, telling you, giving you advice and things like that. Right. Well, we, uh, this was, a this was one of the times that, you know, we got to know, uh, the Beatles a little bit, you know, and, uh, because it's almost impossible to know the Beatles that uh, they, they were, there was such a different level of existence than most of us human beings here, right. you know? Right. And I asked him that one time, you know, I said to him, I said, George, do you realize, do you realize when you guys, you know, move to the right, that the planet kind of tilts a little bit? Do you know that? 
That's and right. you know, he was, he was a very kind of introspective kind of guy. I mean, he, he was a thinker, you know. And he took a bit and then he said, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In other words, like I gotta carry that around with me, man. So he you agree, he agreed I with gotta, you. I got I got I gotta carry that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. I mean that, that's a big burden, you know. Like for example, when I toured with uh, I toured with Ringo in nineteen ninety seven, I think it was. Uh, the Ringo's the All Star yeah. Review or whatever. Yeah. When he wanted to go to a movie, we had the whole theater. Wow. The whole theater. <laughs> wow. They opened it up in the afternoon for him, you know? That's great. Hey, go. He just can't go. He can't, can't be around. I mean, they, they're not going to leave him alone, you know? Right. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it, it's going to be like that forever. You know, you, you can't go anywhere being a Especially beetle. when, uh, you know, the other two, uh, you know, John was shot. And yeah. George stabbed. That's Which true. is the stupidest thing I've ever heard of in my life, you know. Really? Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. Let's kill a rock and roll musician. That's a good idea. Yeah, why? It's dumb. Yeah. Dumb. Had, had to have some issues there somewhere. Yeah. I mean, it, yes, that's not right at all. Um, well, what about you as far as, do people recognize you? Like when you, you're you going to go get some bread or something and, and hey, look, there's Felix. Does that happen? Uh, you know, not, not, not really. Uh, as I, I mean, first of all, you have to understand that pre uh, MTV, uh, mm. it was you were not as as visible, you know, uh, as you are after that. You know, right, right. Uh, prior prior to that, you had, as you said, Ed Sullivan, Hullabaloo, Shindig. You had uh, uh, various television shows like Andy Williams. You had some of these, you know, local shows that were like Clay Cole in New York. They were like dick clark's but when you have mtv you you, when you had a hit record you were played every single hour every single day uh the 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 the, the people knew you more you know uh so no i i I don't have that i I, certain neighborhoods i get noticed more than others but for the most part we're we're pretty incognito plus i wish i looked like i looked then and then i I wouldn't mind getting noticed (laughs) (laughs) that's what happens when you get older you you get older Gravity takes hold, right? It just, yeah. you know, it happens to us all, but, you know. That's right. You can't escape. <laughs> you can't escape. That's right. Well, uh, the, uh, but the future is, is looking better as far as, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that the Mickey Dolitz thing goes okay. You said they're kind of pushing it to the future, but it's. Yeah, I, I think, I think it'll be fine. Uh, you know, the, the whole, uh, the whole thing really seriously depends on the public's acceptance of a tour. Yeah. Uh, in this case, there's twofold in that, you know, the first, the first thing is, do you want to come out and, and, and be in public? Right. That That's number one. A, a lot of my, you know, so-called demographic people, they're not so anxious to go out the door right now, you know? Right. So if they do, it'll continue. And if they don't, there's really nothing we can do because that's not. the audience. That's who we're playing for. You know, anybody who's interested, you know, in coming out that may be younger, uh, that's okay, but I mean, for the most part, we know who our audiences are. That's right, and I know a lot of a lot of the bands were doing the virtual, you know, online, but that's not the same as being in concert, right? And well, uh, it's certainly not. The energy is is no. it, it will never replace the live. No, it'll never replace it. You know, I mean, it it, it can sound okay and it look okay, but it doesn't feel okay. You know, right? I I just. For me personally, I'm thinking about, you know, it's a scary situation with the COVID and things like that out there. But, you know, for me, that's a chance I'd be willing to take. You know, I mean, that's just me, though. You know, right. I just want to see some bands. And if I got sick, hey, I got to see some cool bands. You know, well, I just, we'll see. Right? I mean, like right? say, that older you get, you know, like, you know, basically people are, you know, they're reflecting on their uh, eternal, you know, yeah, position. I get they, that. They may not or may think that. I don't know. I, yeah. I really think we're going to be okay here. Yeah. I think that this is a, it's on the wane, Yeah. you know, and, and I think that, you know, the more people who realize that the vaccination will keep, keep them from getting That's sick and become ill, right. uh, the sure it'll be, but you know, we'll see what happens. I have no idea. Right. Well, is there, um, are there some other, uh, acts, you know, Mickey Dolenz is cool. Are there some other acts from back in the day that you would be interested in playing with or you'd like to play with in the future? Well, there's quite a few, you know. Uh, I mean, over the years, I've tried to pair up with a number of people, but sometimes it, sometimes it just doesn't happen, uh, especially if their health is not that good, you right, know. Right. Uh, uh, 
it, it all depends. You know, it, it comes down to a question of money in that, you know, if you've got two acts that require to be paid, obviously, the ticket sale, the ticket prices go up tremendously. Yeah. And, you know, Garth Brooks is a perfect example. He, he keeps his ticket prices down. Right. So that everybody can afford it. He's so smart. That's good. You yeah. know, and, and as a result, he does five days instead of one day, makes the same amount of money, makes a lot of people happy. That's good business. Yes, it That's is. smart. But a lot of people don't do that. And they charge like $500. You know, people can't afford $500, you know, more than once, right. you know, a month. That's no, good. I don't think, you know, no. maybe, but not many. You not know? many, no. It, and it's. I guess that's where the, the greed comes in with some people, you know, but I mean, if, if the people enjoy your music, you need to give them a shot at seeing the, you know, at reasonable well, price. You, know. you, you look back in time and you look back at some of those stage shows that we used to have in the, in the pre uh, 60 days, right. like the early sixties, perhaps. Right. And you saw on the bill, Chuck Berry, Bo yeah. Diddley, yeah. you know, Patti LaBelle, the Blue Bells, the Shirelles. Yeah. You saw all these hey, tickets cost five dollars. Exactly. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Take me back. You can't even oh, for five dollars. That's crazy. You know? And even for back then, that wasn't a lot even for back then. I mean, I know the cost was different, but it's still not a lot for you seeing all these acts. Five dollars. You couldn't put it in a parking lot. I'm down in Nashville yesterday. I swear it was thirty seven dollars to park a car. I said, oh. wait a minute, where, where am I? Yeah, right. Gee, I, What's going on? Get you a bike and go everywhere. I know that's I know. man. That's New York prices right there. That, it's that's an outrage. Uh, yep. Well, I appreciate you talking to me today, and I'm glad uh, we got. It hey, all. it's good to speak to you again. I'm glad we were able to kind of you know get it get it done this time, and uh, you know I appreciate you taking the time as well. Sure, uh, I've enjoyed it. I'm uh, you know, and I'm hopefully I'll get to see you somewhere someday, you know, and well, I hope so. You know, we've got a lot of friends down there in Alabama, you know, uh, especially down in, in your way there, uh, yeah. Mobile, yeah. you know? Uh, sure. and so if we do, uh, you have, you have information on how to reach me. Yeah. Please do. I will. And, and we'll make sure that it happens. I will. I will definitely do it, man. I will definitely All right, do man. it. Hey, God bless. Take care of yourself, bro. God bless you, man. Thank you. See ya. All right. Bye. Say goodbye to your dad. I sure will. All right. All right. Bye. See ya.